Um, should we talk about Diamond? The Diamond Conference? Well, yeah, I can't remember if we've talked about that strange thing where, where Stephen Jay Gould's widow is suing him. Yeah, I don't on think On behalf we have. of I, the, I, the Papua New Guineans and we were for, thinking for slandering about talking him it. as a people or something. It's very strange. Yeah, I think we avoided it. I looked into it and then I decided that it was uh, a potential tar baby. But yeah, uh, but maybe uh, we. Well, yeah, didn't she? I mean, this was a piece he wrote. We should say that was in the New Yorker. Yes, and, April uh, 2008. And it was, uh, yeah, and it was describing an incident in, in, in New Guinea, right, Papua New Guinea, where right. um, Diamond has spent you know a great deal of time. Yes. And and it was it, was it a murder? Well, it so the, basically the piece was about. Um, Revenge feuding in uh, right. Guinea, and um, and I guess uh, you know Diamond has uh, has written about it before. Uh, Papua New Guinea is is one of these places where uh, there are people living in a way that supposedly resembles that of our pre-civilization right. ancestors. At least the, some of the first contact um, with these people. Uh, you could make that assumption nowadays. Of course, almost all these tribes have been uh, have been exposed to Western culture and are going through all sorts of uh, changes. But some of their some of these tribal feuds are persisting into the future, in spite of the attempts of local governments to impose law and order. So this this article that came out uh, last year was about um, a case of a young man whose uncle was killed in a tribal war and it was about this young man's uh, quest to get vengeance and right. about how finally he did get vengeance and um, and he ended up uh, I think and it was all very complicated it was about all these elaborate rules that these societies have for when vengeance is required and then what you can do to uh, to get it and yeah. when you can be satisfied. And the rules are extremely complicated. The article was really fascinating. But I remember when I read it originally, I thought it was really strange because, as I recall, and you can't get this online anymore, in part because of this lawsuit, but it, but as I recall, it seemed to suggest it had a weird ending where Diamond seemed to be almost regretting the inability of most modern humans to exact blood revenge. Because he's saying mm -hmm. it's one of life's greatest satisfactions, wow. and uh, so it was kind of weird that way. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but anyway, what's happened? So um, Diamond was basically saying there's this one guy, and he named him Daniel Wemp, who did go on this quest. Eventually, I'm not sure if he did it personally or he sort of paid somebody to do it. Uh, got the guy who had killed his uh, uncle. He was stabbed in the back by a spear and he was paralyzed supposedly mm -hmm. and uh, confined to a wheelchair but then there were some other people who had to die along the way and um, now the uh, there are two people in um, in New Guinea that the man that Diamond said uh, got the revenge his name is Daniel Webb and the person who was supposedly the uh, victim whose name is uh, Mandingo they're both suing Diamond for uh, defamation mm -hmm. um, Webb says that this vengeance never happened. Mandingo is fine. He's not paralyzed. He's not in a, uh, a wheelchair. Hmm. And somehow, uh, yeah, you're right, um, Stephen Jay Gould's widow, Rhonda Shearer, yeah. uh, dug up, she did a, an exhaust, she's got a lot of money, so she did an exhaust. Yeah, she basically paid someone to re-report the article, didn't she? Yes. Yeah, and, and yet this is something that went through the New Yorker's um, fact-checking. Yes. Department, which is you know pretty serious, serious scrutiny in itself. So yeah, I just don't know what to think about it. So well, I talked to um, one anthropologist who knows all the principles and who has spent some time in uh, New Guinea. And yeah. She asked not to be named because um, because this is uh, it's a very sticky situation. Yeah. But she said that she thought that probably. Uh, Diamond um, did that he was a little bit too credulous in uh, accepting the story of uh, 
of this guy, Daniel Wemp, and talking about mm. how he got revenge. And this, this anthropologist said that these people in New Guinea routinely just, men routinely just tell tall tales. Well, and, yeah. I mean, that's been that a problem that anthropologists have had, you know, from the beginning of anthropology. Right. This is like the accusation ten. against Margaret Mead in her book, uh, Coming of Age in Samoa. Oh, yeah. And when I was writing um, Fire in the Mind, I was talking to this guy, uh, Al, Al Ortiz, who's no longer alive, but he was a, an anthropologist, but he was also, uh, had come from San Juan Pueblo, which is one of the Tewa Indian Pueblos north of Santa Fe, and, and, and we were talking about this famous book that, uh, that a, a Southwest archaeologist had done in, uh, in the, I think, late 19th or, I guess, early 20th century. I'd have to look it up, it's, uh, but um, he was place names, and he would um, interview all the people from San Juan Pueblo and Santa Clara and these other Pueblos in the Rio Grande about you know what they called certain things and um, then apparently for each name they gave me give them a quarter or something and then <laughs> uh -huh. and then Ortiz was telling me about how you know I think he had a father or uncle who was one of the one of the informants for this study and he was saying how they'd get together later and just you know just laugh their heads off you know about all these names they'd made up for <laughs> yeah. things to get the quarters from the anthropologist so mm -hmm. well I think but there's ways you can cross check you know right. to, yeah. Well, remember, Napoleon Chagnon said that uh, when he was, you know, he, this is the great anthropologist who studied the Yanomamo, this, this yeah. very warlike society in, um, in uh, the Amazon, and when he was trying to construct genealogies, he had to go through elaborate likes because there were taboos against, I think in particular against naming uh, dead people. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so... He would have to, you know, he got one informant who would come to him secretly and tell him who these dead people were, but then Chagnon couldn't accept uh, those names just on the basis of one informant, so he would cross-check with other people, and he had to do it in this really delicate way, yeah. because um, if one person found out that another had revealed names, it might start off a, a, um, a violent yeah. feud, but... Uh, well, you know, so this the same anthropologist who was telling me about this situation said that she thought it was terrible that Schur had helped these people uh, file this lawsuit. Yeah. Because she said that this will mean it will completely screw up the relationship between uh, anthropologists and their subjects in this region. Oh, yeah. I mean, they spent many, many decades cultivating these people as, uh, as informants for their studies and trying to integrate themselves into these societies and now they're going to see it as this adversarial is that her point? Adversarial or well no she's saying that if you you know you dangle out the uh, possibility of millions of dollars before, oh, before these yeah. people they will they'll they say will, something else so <laughs> just like right. a